And now I'm going to take us to our topic for today, and this is not a beginner's topic. So if you're new here, sit back and relax. We'll have lots of things in it that you might really resonate with. But it is a topic that I visit every year, once a year, and it's the levels of consciousness. Not yet, but okay. <laughs> it's to consciously choose to consciously choose how we see the world. We're talking about the four levels of consciousness that are taught by new thought. Now, in this talk, we're gonna be talking about consciousness in a very specific way. Consciousness meaning how I perceive myself and the world around me. And how we consciously see the world, how we interpret it, how we make meaning, is the key to the life we'll experience. Because you've all thought, you know, we teach that thoughts and mind produce after their kind, that unity is about thoughts, but it's more than that. It's about our perceptions. It's about how we feel the world is treating us or how we feel we're doing in the world. And so in that way, unity teachers and new thought teachers over the years have enhanced this teaching have brought it out, and they have divided the levels of consciousness for our purposes into four different levels. They are victim consciousness. Hmm, I don't need to say any more. <laughs> Victor consciousness. Vessel consciousness. And verity consciousness. So those four levels of consciousness in the great alliteration by Dr. Paul Hasselbeck, victim, victor, vessel, and verity are what we're gonna talk about today and how we can consciously choose which one we're going to live in. Most of the time we go on default. We go on rote, habitual ways of being. Like we're driving our car home and we don't even have to think about it. And all of a sudden, we are perceiving the world, our bosses, our spouses, our children, our neighbors and our relatives is either out to get us or something we have to overcome. Right? And those moments are in a wake-up call for us to see the world differently. What I've also noticed and we've developed here with the help of our incredible music team and Ms. Misa Malone. That, yeah. That the world itself really recognizes this because if you look at music, really clearly, music has those same four levels of musical songs. You can have the country western, I am the victim song. <laughs> the Katy Perry, I am gonna overcome song. I am a firework, right? The vessel song, I am a channel of infinite love. And the verity song, the oneness song that we sing here all the time, I am. I am more than I am. So those songs all fit into this lexicon, and we're going to use music to show us what that is. So we're going to start with number one, victim consciousness. Right? And victim consciousness is something that is instinctual. We learn it as a little child. We learn it before we can actually consciously choose it. And then society keeps reinforcing it for us. We say, oh, isn't that so bad? They treated you so horrible. And when we get more sympathy, we learn to be the victim over and over and over again. And without knowing it, all of a sudden, we hold up our victim card first. You can see it in other people really clearly. They're out to get me, they say. The world, the deck is stacked against me, as if they have no agency of their own or no ability to interact with this. Victim consciousness is pervasive in our society, and it is pervasive for many reasons. Arguments are ca <laughs> arguments are caused by two people or two countries fighting to be the victim. <laughs> fighting for the place of victimhood. No, you're the one who did me wrong. No, but you're the one who did it. And we take on this mantle. This is a quote from Gay Hendricks, an author and philosopher. And he's, he's right, he's right, because when we take on that victim mentality, it's all we can see is how we were wronged. And of course, there's a song to go with it that Mesa's is going to lead us in. 
there's no use for me to try my conversation has run dry that's what's going on nothing's fine i'm torn i'm all out of faith this is how i feel i'm cold and i am shame lying naked on the floor illusion never changed into something real I'm wide awake and I can see the perfect sky is torn you're a little late I'm already torn naked on the floor <laughs> don't it feel so good to sing the blues <laughs> Don't it feel so good to say, oh, woe is me, naked on the floor, right? We all love that song, right? Because it's like, oh, my God. That typifies the feelings we have that the world is stacked against us and, and that people are out to get us. And, you know, we are so good at it myself included, that we build up a whole toolkit, a whole toolkit of what tools we'll use as the victim. So the victim tools include giving up, that's it, I'm out, bye. <laughs> if you're gonna be like that, I'm out of here. I'm gonna take my toys and go home. Complaining, oh, complaining is the king of the victim tools, right? Oh, can you believe what they did? Can you believe it? And you, you know, and then that leads right into the next one, commiserating. It's not enough to complain alone, you've got to enroll other people in your victimhood. <laughs> Because what good is it if you're the victim sitting there all alone? You've got to get a posse together, right? <laughs> the other tools we do are blaming. I, I was a saint. <laughs> I had no part in that, right? It just happened to me. It just dropped out of the sky like that. And we blame other people. The politicians, the family member, the spouse, the children, whatever it is. Not me, them. And then we justify. Even if we had some part in it, and we know we had some part in it, one of the other tools we can pull out is justification. I did it because you did it to me. <laughs> I did it because my mother taught me this is how I had to do it. So it's a blanket indemnity for all of our victim behavior because it's how we're taught to be in this world, right? So we have no personal responsibility of it. And then patience. Patience is a tool victims know very well. I'll wait, I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait for the right moment to tell you how much I'm the victim of this. I'll wait and I'll wait and milk it and milk it and 10 years later, they're still talking about that instant that happened 10, 20 years ago that they're the victim of, right? Anybody identify with any of these? <laughs> right? Woo! Anybody like to get rid of them? Yes, right? Well, you can. There are... Part of it is understanding that there are advantages to you for doing it. We don't do any behavior unless there's a reward, right? So let's look at why we play the victim card so often, right? We gain sympathy. Oh, it makes us feel loved. Oh, they just are, they really care. They really care what happens to me. So we, we you know, slightly, even a little bit, embellish the story sometimes. Not, not me, but maybe some of you embellish the story sometimes. <laughs> right? So we gain sympathy. We get seen. And one of the most important things we can ever do is be seen and heard and understand and understood. But to do it to place ourselves in a victimhood in order to get that basic human need met is not healthy and it's not productive. What it's doing is saying to yourself over and over again, I need this. I need to be the victim in order to get my other needs met. And that is crippling to us as human beings. It's crippling to us. It leaves us in this perpetual state of helplessness. Right? So let's look at it honestly and lovingly and say, oh yeah, I do that, and I'm ready to let it go. We also do it to get help, you know? We play the victim to get help when we could very clearly say, hey, 
I need some help here. I need to get this done. I, I need to enroll you. This is what I'm thinking. Do you want to help? You know, and the problem sometimes with us as human beings is we go to this one person and we ask for help, and that person has the full agency to say yes or no. But when they say no to us, we feel like we're just being so let down that we give up again. Back to the toolkit, and we pull up giving up. Rather than going, there's an infinite number of people in the world that might be willing to help you. So let's look for someone that will help you without you having to play the victim. Let's enroll someone on the other side of victimhood in something else. I pressed the wrong button. Receiving help. And the victim advantage is that it's also comfortable. We have all, all of us, done it for so long, it is our comfort space. Uh Uh-oh, (laughs) that hit a bell with someone. (laughs) We have been the victim so long, we are so comfortable, we know how to maneuver in this space. And you might have a therapist who tries to push you out of the victimhood, and you fire the therapist. The therapists in the room are going, yep, been that, (laughs) had that happen to me, right? (laughs) Yes, I was like, because people become really, this is how we know how to operate. We know how to operate in this arena. And I want us to consciously choose, okay? So one of the natural ways that people show up in unity is they go, okay, this is just too painful. I can't go on being the victim of this situation anymore. And they come to unity and they hear about our positive thinking and affirmations and we stand in power poses and we We affirm the good and the divine in you, and they're like, yes, yes. And they go right into victor, victor mentality. And victor mentality is really useful. You can see it in our kids downstairs right now. They're having a lesson about superheroes because, you know, we all need a good Wonder Woman, Superman moment of being the victor over everything, right? We have become the victor, and we are empowered to change our situation and change the life as we take control. And we have songs that say it all the time too. Even our new rap songs are about being in charge. All I do is win, win, win no matter what. I roll with the divine and I'll always have Have enough. enough. And every time I speak on my abundance, everybody's hands go up. And they stay there, and they stay there, and they stay there up, down, up, down, up, down. Cause all I do is win, win, win. One with the divine, with the damn, put your hands, make them stay there. Tell for me to take a spin on the verse, cause I'm undefeated and I won't stop now. Keep your hands up, get them in the sky for the real two six unity in the house. I'll never go nowhere, and I will stay on track. My faith is strong and true, cause spirit's got my back. And I will cut the slack, because I am in the flow. My hands go up and down. But now my faith for show And still my good be serving Because I am deserving That's me was in the pits But now I am a brand new version Can't never count me out Cause spirit counts me in More blessing I can count Accounts count me in My good is overflowing Cause I am a champion Cause all I do, all I do All I do is win, win, win No matter what I roll with the divine And I'll always have enough And every time I speak on my own Everybody's hands go All we do is win, 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 win. Yes, victor consciousness is so empowering. I want my children to understand it. I want all of you to understand it, that you're not the victim of this. You are actually can overcome all of it. And it has its own set of tools, and we teach them here all the time. Victor consciousness tools are very powerful. Affirmations, I am hot. Yes, I am powerful, I am beautiful, all of those affirmations, I am empowered itself, can take us to a new level. Denials, that diagnosis has no power to block my good. That job has not my source, the universe is my source. All those denials and affirmations lead us to new realms of power and possibility. Vision boards, we do them here every year. We do them in the Absolute Abundance courses. Visioning, setting out our goals, claiming it, naming it, calling it forth, manifesting it. 
affirmative prayer. I am whole and powerful. I am an expression of the divine. That affirmative prayer can be part of our, vic- our victor consciousness truths. Guided meditations. Whew. Yes, using the power of word, using the power of meditation to shift our neural cort- our neural pathways and make new ones so that our old habits of being the victim gets translated and a new pathway, a new super highway of victor consciousness can be established. Power poses, I mentioned them earlier. They're basically all Superman poses and there's re- research that shows that holding expansive poses rather than looking at your phone like this <laughs> but holding expansive poses can literally change your brain chemistry and make you more available and powerful make you ready for whatever is going to come so that you're ready to respond rather than react and run in fear so those are the victor tools we all practice them here we employ them in all of our classes and there's advantages of course to being a victor. The victor is self-empowerment. I, I can do this, right? Action-based. Instead of being passively letting the world happen, we're out there making the change we need to have happen. We're making the difference in the world. Proactive disposition. It's a, a radical flip from the victim. Look what happens to me. To, yes, I will take care of this. I will conquer this. Physical manifestation. Victors win battles, they acquire companies, they acquire land, they acquire things, they make things happen. We wouldn't be here. The building wouldn't get built without some victor consciousness in it and physical manifestation, right? Freedom and choice. Victor gives you an opportunity to say yes and no, right? And to move where you want to go. And Victor has warnings too. When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, (laughs) right? And this warning is one of the most profound that I found. The victor will never ask, never be asked if he told the truth, right? The history is written by the victors. This quote is from Adolf Hitler, and it's a little bit jarring, but I mean, quoting Adolf Hitler. But I want to give us a word of caution about this victor consciousness because we can then become steamrollers. We can become blind to what our actions do, blind to the ripples we leave in the pond. And when a gentler touch might be necessary, we bring a steamroller to the problem. When a compassionate ear really might be what's needed, We tell people what they should do. When a loving touch is all that's required, we pick them up by their bootstraps because they can't seem to do it. Or we overhelp. I'll fix this for you. I'll bring this for you. I'll give you this because I'm the champion. And so victor consciousness, while a necessary step in our development, isn't the destination, folks isn't the final place. It's just one aspect of who we can be with wisdom when the time is right. So then we go to vessel consciousness. Vessel consciousness is best described by the, by the prayer of St. Francis, attributed to St. Francis, actually. They don't actually think the man francis wrote it but make me a channel of their of your peace where there is hatred let me bring love and what victim uh, vic, vessel consciousness excuse me what vessel consciousness is about is that knowing we are a conduit of something larger than ourselves vessel consciousness is knowing that we may feel like we can't handle all the world's problems but there is a solution and we want and we are ready to be the vessel for it. William Shakespeare said it as, the emptiest instrument makes the loudest sound, right? And then we can empty ourselves of personal will and self-will run riot. We can become a vessel 
for something greater happening in the world. Rumi puts it this way. If you were a blade of grass or a tiny flower, I will pitch my tent in your shallow. Only your presence revives my withered heart. You are the candle that lights the whole world. And I, I am the empty vessel for your light. For all those times you stood by me For all those truths that you made me see For all the joy you brought to my life For all the wrong you made right For every dream that you made true For all the love found in you I'll be forever thankful When I couldn't speak You were my eyes When I couldn't see You saw the best There was in me Lifted me up When I couldn't reach You gave me faith Cause you believed I'm everything I am Because you Thank you, Misa. And that consciousness has a real use. It's like we are all vessels, right? bringing forth wisdom of our ancestors, wisdom of spirit, wisdom of each other, and we get to be the conduit the, that carries the electricity, the water, whatever the metaphor is, to the world that absolutely needs it. Vessel tools are powerful. Vessel tools are visioning, again, meditation, just really being willing to sit in the silence and learn to be the emptiness. Beginner's mind, not thinking we know it all. Be willing to be the beginner over and over and over again. Every day of our life makes us teachable, makes us able to grow, makes us able to let go of other things. Openness, flexibility when we're a vessel is not our agenda. It's something bigger than us that is trying to be birthed here on earth. It literally is the birth metaphor. I am the vessel for something to come through me. Right? And when we can tap into that, male or female, we are all birthing a greater reality right here on earth, a heaven on earth, if we consciously choose to. Surrender. Stopping fighting for something that isn't happening. As I've shared with you before, one of my favorite affirmations that a, my prayer partner back in Unity of New York taught me John Randolph Price, right doors open easily. <laughs> right? Why do we keep banging on the door that won't open? Get out the crowbar, surrender, and go find the door or the window that's open. Right? Surrender to what's possible. Those are the tools of vessel consciousness that understands there's more for us than we can possibly really see. And the last one is forgiveness. There's more, but the last one I've identified here today is forgiveness. A vessel understands that it's not personal, right? The vessel understands that it's not a thwarting of their, of them, and they're able to forgive more easily. We use vessel consciousness in forgiveness all the time, and if you can't forgive, if you can't forgive, you are not healthy and whole. Let me say it again. If you cannot forgive, you are not healthy and whole. Right? Forgiveness is essential to our well-being. It has nothing to do with the other person. It has everything to do with us. Resentment, 
It's like taking poison and wishing the other person would die, <laughs> right? Forgiveness is the antidote to the poison, folks. So that's what the tools that we use as vessel and the advantages of it are profound. We remove ego from the equation, you know, personal self-driven ego. We'll still have an ego, but it's not about our agenda anymore. Assurance, hmm, relaxation. <laughs> would anybody like to be a little more relaxed as we go through life? I know I would, right? Ah, oh, manifestation beyond imagination. When you're the vessel, something that can come through you is bigger than you could ever imagine it to be. My daughter, who's downstairs right now, is because I was using vessel consciousness to allow someone to gift me a child. Someone to gift me a child, to conceive and give me a child that wasn't in my understanding of what was possible in the world. But a wonderful couple decided they were going to get pregnant and give JD and I an infant. That is manifestation beyond imagination. And that's what's possible for us when we do that. Comfort, right? We might be comfortable in our victimhood because we know it so well, but real comfort comes from the vessel consciousness. Whew. So the last one, verity. It's also known as oneness consciousness. Michael Beckwith, Beckwith of Agape calls it oneness. We call it verity consciousness here, meaning the wholeness consciousness. And the wholeness consciousness is about the consciousness that knows the truth. The Father and I are one. God and I are one. You and I are one. We are all one with the one. Eckhart Tolle says it this way. I believe that Je Jesus realized his oneness with God and he attempted to show the way to all of us. How to realize our own oneness with God. And we do it almost every week here. And you might recognize this tune because we sing it. We affirm it in song, in music, and it shows the way. Misa. My eyes are wide and open. My eyes can see. Right? Doesn't that feel different? Doesn't that feel better? That's why we sing it every week. That's why we do it. Verity consciousness is, let's face it, folks, the goal. That's what we should consciously choose. And I get little glimpses of it. It takes a lot of practice to get from all of these victim and victor to get to understanding that whatever is happening in the world is actually happening for me, not to me. It is a radical shift of understanding that whatever is happening is for my highest and best if I would only allow it to stop playing the victim, to stop trying to overcome it, to pretend like I am just the vessel when knowing I am one with it. I am one with it all happening. The very tools we can employ are meditation. To understand when, when everything hits the fan, it is time to stop doing and start breathing, right? When everything hits the fan, it is time to stop doing, 
and start breathing. You cannot afford not to meditate because it will get you to the right answer. The oneness prayer of understanding and affirming that in every moment, God is. In every other individual, God is. The wholeness of the universe is contained in a single cell. The miracle of life is contained in an atom. That's oneness. <sighs> Consciousness studies. Being able to be here and think about what we think, to <laughs> think about how we behave, and what we think about what the world is around us is a part of the tools of Verity Consciousness to realize, oh, I'm in my victim mode. Oh, I want to overcome that. <laughs> How do I get there? How do I consciously choose how to see the world? And how do I do it over and over and over again when I need to? How do I develop that kind of facility to be able to consciously choose in the toughest of moments? That's why we do this. Again, surrender. If it's all one, and we have an adverse reaction to what's happening in the world or a diagnosis or something tragic in front of us, we need to surrender because it has happened. Saying it shouldn't be that way doesn't make it go away. Have you noticed? <laughs> they shouldn't have died doesn't bring people back from the dead. They shouldn't have said that doesn't take the words out of their mouths. Surrender to what is, is the first process of shifting you for what is. Forgiveness again. And even in Verity Consciousness, there's a great story of forgiveness in the Gospels, the prodigal son. When the prodigal son returns on his hands and knees, begging forgiveness from the father, the father doesn't forgive him because he never condemned him. The father doesn't say you're forgiven, he just says quick, kill the fatted calf, bring him clothes, bring him shoes, put a ring on his finger, let's have a party, for my son who is lost is home. When we come home, forgiveness is unnecessary, but it is still there, because the son felt it. But there was no condemnation that he had to forgive himself. He was just loved. Forgiveness is an expression of love. And again, we come full circle to patience. Verity consciousness gives us patience to see how things will unfold, to wait for the divine order to show itself in our world on its time, not ours. Not ours. Right? And questioning. Verity questioning is how can I use this for me? How can I find the good in this situation? How can I see the light? How can I be the light? When we want something and we want to be a presence in the world, to shift from victor consciousness saying, I am the light of the world, to asking ourselves, how am I gonna be the light of the world? How will that be seen and known in this community, in my work, in my family, how am I the light of the world? The truth cannot be denied, you are the light, but how are you going to show and demonstrate that? Verity consciousness gives us the opportunity to shift from being and doing to being and knowing, right? Not being and doing, a human doing in the world, but a human being in the world, knowing the truth of who we are. We are the light. If I'm the light, let me just bring light to you. Let me listen, let me hear you. Let me wait patiently for you to see the truth. That's the advantage. In the universe, in the wholeness of the universe, death and destruction happens every day. And no one calls it bad out there in space. But here, when death or disease happens, we call it bad and evil, it must be eradicated. 
In Verity Consciousness, we can know that a cancer diagnosis is a gift, that an HIV diagnosis is a gift, that an opportunity for healing has come and an opportunity to know the world in a different way. And we stop trying to eradicate things and start trying to love things. Love ourselves, love our bodies, love the whole system of medicine, to love what is possible for us to do, what is possible for us to overcome. As my friend Joy Weiler said, I am, she was a little person and she was three foot six. She goes, no amount of affirmations in the world is gonna make me six foot tall. (laughs) But I, I am radically whole. I am radically whole. No matter what is going on in your life, Verity Consciousness knows that you are whole and you stop fighting what is and accepting and cooperating, cooperating with the medical team, cooperating with the spiritual healers, cooperating with the universe, cooperating with God to go, how in this situation, in this diagnosis, in this divorce, in this job loss, in this physical world, am I going to be the light? When we can shift into that kind of verity consciousness, the world will be different. And we get to consciously choose, folks. We get to consciously choose each and every day to get the advantages of peace and serenity stability, spiritual manifestation. Now you may be wanting a partner here in the world, but there are partners everywhere. And the most important partnership you have is with yourself and with your God. And when you can have that, the rest in the physical world will manifest. Confidence, knowing that no no matter what wind blows through, no matter what storm comes, I am whole. Faith comes from knowing that. An abundance consciousness. True abundance consciousness cannot be achieved until we understand the verity consciousness because we may be successful for one minute, but we will find ourselves the victim of it the next. Understanding that the world is constantly showering us with good And we are the ones who have to open and shift our consciousness to accept it comes in this consciousness. Verity, consciousness. Oneness, consciousness. It's the Christ consciousness. It's the Buddha consciousness. It's the Krishna consciousness. And we are all here to demonstrate it. That's what we're really here for. And that's why I know you're here in this room or watching me online. The people who don't believe that aren't watching. (laughs) Right? Or they're listening to someone else say it, or they're doing whatever they're doing. But we've all been there until one day we have an awakening and come and say, wait, there's more. There's more. And I want to be part of that more. So let's take that to our time of meditation.